Good afternoon, my name is Teresa O'Donnell and I'm the Assistant City Manager for the City of Dallas. I'm very happy to be here this afternoon and thank you all for being in, inside on such a lovely San Francisco afternoon. Just a little context, Dallas is a big city. It's 1.2 million in a region of about uh, 7 million people. We've got a big workforce and we've got lots and lots of data. Um, we're here today to talk about partnership, collaboration, and how the power of data is really transforming neighborhoods in Dallas. One of my partners uh, on the talk today, Bill, is the CEO of Habitat for Humanity. A couple of years ago, Habitat commissioned a blight study with the University of Texas to look at blight in Dallas. That was a great study. It was a macro study. And it really started a, a very important conversation in the community about blight and poverty and what was going on in some of Dallas's neighborhoods. What we found from that study, from this big macro data, was that we had about 9,500 lots that were showing some indicators of blight. So when you think about 9,500 lots, that's, a, that's a, a massive amount, that's a big problem, that's a massive amount of lots. It's hard to get your head around. What this data inspired us to do is to delve into it and to look deeper. And what we found when we just took a, filtered this data through a couple of very simple data sets, property ownership and property condition, we found out that 750 of those lots were owned by five people, five slumlords. Now, while 9,500 lots seems like an insurmountable problem, five, you can get your hands around five, right? That's actionable data. With f going after five people, we set our city attorneys on five people, we can really start to improve the lives of residents in Dallas. And that Dallas is known for a lot of things, but <laughs> big data and open data, we're not on the forefront. We're not San Francisco, we're not New York, we're not uh, Chicago, but we have in the last couple of years with some of these very important partnerships really started to catch up. We're making some significant progress. We started an open uh, data portal uh, with Socrata just about a year or so ago, and we started this great partnership with uh, Civic Insight. So we're trying to make up for la lost time. But I think one of the things I wanted to stress today was the importance of these partnerships, especially with the nonprofit side and the philanthropic side. Dallas is very blessed to have great uh, philanthropic community, and they really have been the leaders on pushing us towards making this data open and accessible and usable, uh, just like the, with the work that you're going to hear from, that Bill's going to talk about. Uh, so that's been very, very uh, important. Habitat has been a true leader, and we're very blessed to have them as our partners here. And I'm going to turn it over to Bill to talk a little bit about what they've done. Well, thank you, Teresa. So I believe everything starts out with collaboration. Collaboration is the key to success. And a couple of years ago, Habitat for Humanity, realizing that we can't build ourselves out of a solution, created an, a partnership called Epic Dallas, Economic Partners Investing in Communities. This partnership was the combination of Dallas Area Habitat for Humanity, Safer Dallas, Communities Foundation, Police Department, and Grow South, the Mayor's Economic Development Initiative. From this partnership, we believe that we could take and make neighborhoods safe and secure, provide home ownership that was not only accessible but affordable, but also create job-creating economic uh, development that was not only um, doable, but it was also sustainable. So from this mission, we've set out to find where are we going to make these investments? How are we going to make them? And, and why are we going to make them? We found six focus areas based off of demographic data and market-driven data. But we didn't, the next step was that we really wanted to find out, you know, where should we make the investment in the individual neighborhoods? And what we couldn't do, it, we couldn't make that happen simply because we didn't have property data. And by property data, we mean data like uh, taxable information, appraisal data, uh, code, fire, police, all those city and, and county functions. And we wanted to put them in one place because one thing we realized as we were going through this is that if we didn't have the information we needed to make a good investment, what about all these other philanthropic organizations out there making their social investments? And what about the philanthropic foundations funding those organizations? Hundreds of millions of dollars are going in to pay for these things based off of antidote and, and output, not data and outcomes. So we knew if we were able to accomplish this, it could have far more, far more uses. So 
we basically um, set out to create a partnership with the city of Dallas. We did the blight study and we, we started working with them with that, but we didn't know if they wanted to provide the data or if they, they could even if they wanted to. So what we were delighted to find out, they were already moving down that direction. So we immediately switched into how do we not duplicate our efforts? How do we take and create a data set that's usable by all but not um, duplicate what they're doing versus what we wanted to do. We wanted to accomplish three things. We wanted the city to make better decisions with its investment through understanding this data. We wanted the philanthropic um, community to make better decisions with, with its money. And third, we wanted the community to have access to this data to make better decisions for their individual neighborhoods and have better communication with the city of Dallas. So through this uh, combination of city of Dallas, um, and, and Habitat, next thing is we had to find a way that, because what we decided to do is that we wanted the community to have the data first, because we felt if a million and a half people had access to the data, they would actually create momentum for more open data, and they would actually find better ways to use the data than just three or four organizations sitting together. So, but we needed a way that the community can actually use it and understand it and implement it. So we found Civic Insight, the key to executing our vision. Uh, an amazing organization that has a great product. And so to, to talk about that vision, I want to introduce Eddie Tejada, uh, CEO and co-founder of uh, Civic Insights. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, <laughs> last, time, last time I presented here, the audience was half the size, uh, and we were announcing Blight Status, the, pro uh, uh, the, the product that we had developed as part of our Code for America Fellowship in 2012. And the launch was an incredible success, and we've continued to work on, on Blight Status. But since then, we've turned Blight Status into a startup, where, we've get, we, where we continue to work on these issues, but we've expanded a little bit more, and I want to talk a little bit about that today. So. Uh, Civic Insight is a company that brings together place-based data in a simple and easy-to-use interface so that all major stakeholders can be aligned and understand what's going on in the built environment. Part of what we do is we make this data, which is generally very complex, very simple and easy to understand. So here you can see that we use simple language and clear dates on the most important events that that anyone who's interested in working on, on a property can, can get a sense of. We also um, make this even simpler. We don't want people to come to our website over and over again. So we allow people to subscribe to, to individual properties or to entire neighborhoods and receive notifications about any recent activity that's going on. When we started in New Orleans, we were just dealing with code enforcement. And that was very uh, useful for, for the city, but we talked to cities and we've worked with cities from all over the country. We've learned that it's not just code enforcement information. If you want to understand what is happening in your neighborhood and in your city, you need to incorporate a lot more information. Here's an example. When I visited Habitat for Humanity in Dallas, they had these posters all over their office space. And this is just one of these posters. These little colored in spots are essentially where Habitat currently uh, uh, manages or places that they've built. So this is a neighborhood where they have a big footprint. And the success of their work has cascading impact all over uh, this, this area. So trying to understand what impact building like this has on the city is, is very difficult. So we need to have um, more information. We need to know whether or not crime has gone down. We want to know whether or not building activity has gone up, whether code enforcement violations have gone down. These are the kinds of things that you need to be able to gauge uh, the development of a neighborhood. You know, once you have all this data together, you can also start thinking about other questions. You can start thinking more high level. You can start thinking about what are the trends that are happening? What are this, uh, in just this specific neighborhood or, or a city as a whole? How do you all come to understand what is happening in your city? And how do you all have a common understanding of that? And so we have built an analytics dashboard that makes a lot of this information, all the key indicators to gauge a healthy neighborhood accessible to everyone. You know, 
we're excited that we're going to get to launch in, uh, in, in Dallas uh, next month with the new version of Civic Insight. But we're also excited to announce that we're going to be launching in an additional seven cities, meaning that by the end of the, by, by the, end of the year, in the start of the next year, you're going to be in nine cities using Civic Insight. And all these cities have slightly different uh, workflow, slightly different data, but part of the design of our application is that can take in all this information and make it accessible. So if you've been here for the past few days, you've probably noticed that there's a theme. And ultimately, it's, it's, that, it's not data that helps communities. This is, data is only a part of it. It is people that do the hard work to improve our communities. So it is our role as technologists to breathe life into this raw data, make it easy to understand for the people who are doing the hard work um, on the ground so that they can make the right decisions. Thank you.